The crowd's building up little by little over the years? No, they, they really expected five to 6,000, which is about their average. And I think, again, until the Aztecs win a title, do something like that, mm -hmm. uh, they're not going to be drawing big That's time out here. It's unfortunate. You know, with such a strong field in this year's Cabrillo tournament, the feeling was the winner could vault into the top 20. But it won't be the Aztecs. And they lost to the only team that had any losses before tonight, Texas Christian. Now, the Horned Frogs got some players. Watch the move by Carvin Holcomb. He scored 23, TCU up by 7. But the Aztecs get to within 2 at the half. Anthony Watson leads State again with 22. And Leonard Allen had 13. He ties the game with 6 seconds to play. Looked like overtime, but Tracy Mitchell, who scored 14, will hit at the buzzer. The Horned Frogs will win it. 72 to 70. TCU is 8 and 2. Aztecs 8 and 1. They play Michigan State tomorrow evening at 6.30. Boston College and TCU then go for the Cabrillo title. They won it 82-78 over Michigan State. Now the Spartans have a pretty good one from La Jolla, number double zero. Ken Johnson, he scored 16 for the Spartans to go with 10 rebounds. But the Spartans let him in turnovers too, 19 to 10. Michael Adams with the steal for Boston College goes all the way. Two of his 19 points. Teammate Roger McCready had 16. Eagles then made six straight free throws in the final minute to win it. BC and TCU play for the Cabrillo title tomorrow. Chargers went for the basics today in the NFL draft. They worked on their offensive line and defense. Now the Chargers had the number 12 pick in the opening round, and they took number 64. Coming up in white, Jim Lachey. He's a 6'6", 280-pound offensive lineman from Ohio State. Excellent run blocker, pretty good with the pass, and good speed for his size. We'll take a look at some of the other Charger draft picks in a moment. Meanwhile, San Diego State had four players go in the opening 71, or three players go in the opening 71 pick. Four players overall. Number 21, Torrey Nixon, was drafted by Washington in the second round. Linebacker James Johnson drafted by Detroit in the third. Rich Moran also in the third round by Green Bay. Now, getting back to the Chargers, here are some of the key picks. They spent the following three picks on defensive backs. That number two pick, Wayne Davis, is a diamond in the rough. Look at the number nine pick, Paul Berner. He's a quarterback from Pacific, played his high school ball at Claremont. Play the broom indicating sweep, which means the Padres are about to sweep this series and the doubleheader. It's a Dodger helmet. And he defecates on a Dodger helmet. We'll take care of that tomorrow. You guys look at it this way. The Padres <laughs> needed to win tonight to keep their lead in the National West, rain or not. Tonight, fifth ball win over Pittsburgh put San Diego five percentage points ahead of Los Angeles. Now that's what I call a family feud. I think it's still raining in Pittsburgh. Soggy, soggy night. And for his second night in a row, Al Bumbry was a ray of sunshine. Three hits. Again, this to knock in uh, the game's opening run in the third inning. The Padres had three more in the fourth. Tim Flannery, the key blow, a double in the gap to score two more. Steve Garvey, right in the final two in the seventh inning. This is single to left field, six for Padres. They're now 11 and nine, and they move on to Chicago for three games. Let's go now to the first time they met since the playoffs. So a uh, two Wrigley Field, in case you haven't heard by now, the Padres won the game. <laughs> we point that out, six to five. Here's the rookie uh, shortstop, uh, Sean Dunstan. Watch him leave second before the ball. Caught ya. <laughs> first hitting as Flannery is the board, and then the garb drives one right center. This is going to bring home a couple of runs as the Padres get up against the guess who? Rick Sutcliffe. Remember him? He's three and three this year uh, with his million eight. <laughs> he ain't drawing... Uh, uh, he's getting a lot of money, but he ain't doing a whole lot. Kennedy to center field. Bob Dernier gets there and cannot make the catch. Padres score another run. There comes Garvey, and the Padres went out ahead in this ballgame. Then Jody Davis comes back with a home run to get the Cubs back into it. And then the Padres play long ball with, of all people, Templeton and Nettles. On the way, and Drake hits it high to left field. Going back is Bosley. Back at the wall, to the wall. That ball is out of here, and the Padres get a run back. There's a high fly ball right field way back back to the wall is more on that ball is a home run and the Padres fire ahead six to two did you see the guy who threw the ball back typical Cubs fan with an IQ in double digits here's Leon Durham with a home run in the uh, uh, Cub eighth to uh, bring it within uh, one run as in six five and then uh, in the ninth Gossage had a man on there and uh, actually two and the Gossage gets his seventh save Hawkins his fifth win. He's undefeated. He's 5-0. and oh. This was in Bush Stadium this afternoon. Padres hit. I mean, they hit. Severely did they hit early. Uh, McReynolds here, a base hit to knock in two. This is the first inning against Bob Force. Lonnie Smith throw. Not in time. I don't even know where it went. 
<laughs> we never did see, did we? Martinez with a double down the line. This gets in two more. The Padres got five, count them, five in the first and went out and beat up on uh, St. Louis, who had beaten them yesterday. 12-2 is the final score. Not a real close game. Carmelo Martinez, home run, left field. Padres just kept going. Garvey was four for four. Kennedy had four RBIs. And what's the defensive play of the day by Timmy Flannery at second base? Swing, a fly ball, and a short right. That ball is on a diving catch by the second base. From the so the... Uh, a winner in the ball game is uh, Dave Dravecki, and Force is the loser. They, they won. Uh, wasn't like I tell you what, it wasn't like Sunday, which was eight to one. This was overtime. This was a one-one tie. As Houston scores here, uh, make it two-one. Minnesota, and then it was tied two-two at halftime in the third quarter. What's the go to go down? What's the go to go up? What's the go to score? <laughs> Sounds like the old uh, simmer here. Uh, uh, the head here at this particular moment, and then watch the angle on this goal by Perez. How did that get in? That's the question the goalie was asking himself. And then they come back again. Houston will score again and tie this thing at 5-5 to go to overtime. A minute 15 into overtime. This shot by Gene Woolrich there. The Suckers win it in front of 10,000 and are one game away from going on to the next round. So the Suckers win it 6-5 in overtime. Woolrich has the winning goal. And they lead this series now uh, against Minnesota, quite obviously, uh, two games to none. Now to the other story. The Padres, uh, yesterday they'd gotten their high of five runs in an inning and 12 runs for the game. Now today, bases loaded, Kennedy against McWilliams. Watch. Kennedy lines one to left field. This is a base hit that will score at least two. Garvey in. McReynolds is in. They're waving Martinez to the plate. The throw is not in time. The Padres lead three to one. This is in a five-run fourth inning. Templeton here with a base hit. This is after uh, Pittsburgh scored one with a couple of singles and a wild pitch against Hawkins in the first. And then Royce, who had a couple of doubles and played well, he started a second base tonight against the left-hander. Nice, nice stop by my old friend George Hendrick in right field. <laughs> Buddy hustled, didn't he? Here is uh, Garvey, who had himself uh, a fine day. Three hits tonight after he had four yesterday against St. Louis. That's his fifth home run. He and Kennedy both now 18 RBIs, 12-2 final. Hawkins is still undefeated. 6-0 McWilliams was the loser. They play again tomorrow afternoon. Montreal beats Houston. We've all calmed down just a little bit from this no afternoon. Way. No I've way. heard that no catch in the radio. It was exciting. Exactly. Just hearing it was exciting. One play. I'll tell you what, Padre fans are still buzzing. We're talking about one of the most exciting one nothing games you'll ever see. The Padres combined three hit pitching from Mark Thurman and some great defense in a win over Pittsburgh. And they lead the National West now by a game and a half. When I say defense, here's what I mean. Jim Morrison with the drive second inning. Kevin McReynolds with the running catch in center field. But that's changed compared to this play in the third. One man on. Bill Allman takes a deep left center field. Keep an eye on Kevin Mack. The leaping catch into the fence and it saves the run. Now here's another look. Critics are saying that Mack trapped the ball against the fence. In slow motion, it might even look like that. Some say he pins it and hangs on. But here's another look at regular speed. You'll see that he goes to the wall and he'll bring it down in one motion. Beautiful catch, and it saves a run. Jim Flannery provided all the offense in the seventh inning. This a run-scoring single scores Carmelo Martinez. one nothing. Padres. Mark Thurman goes to 1-2 with the three-hit shutout. Well, the Padres are out to New York for three games after taking two out of three from Montreal this weekend. Andy Hawkins raised his record to 8-0 today as the Padres won it 8-3. to He got plenty of support, too, including this home run from Terry Kennedy in the second inning. Kennedy got four hits. So did Greg Nettles. Padres' second run scored on a gift, a throwing error by Yubi Brooks in the third inning. Throws it to right field. Tim Flannery came in to score. They broke the game open in the fifth. Nettles, career hit number 2,000, drove in a couple of runs as the Padres got five straight hits. Kevin McReynolds and Terry Kennedy followed Nettles with back-to-back -back doubles to drive in a couple more runs. Hawkins pitched seven innings, gave up three runs on 11 hits before Luis De Leon came on to pitch the final two innings.